Hey guys, thanks for joining on. This session is going to be covering the things that happen after or following the interviews that you're doing. So this is typically the third fundamentals coaching session that you're likely to join. So we've got that session here, number three, after the interview, that's the one we're focusing on today. Um, and really what's going to happen is we're going to be talking about all the things that occur once you've finished your interview and what really happens next. So it's a good thing to uh, really know, to really round out your understanding of the process, because there are a few things that'll happen that you probably didn't expect, uh, but there'll be nice surprises for you. So as I said earlier, uh, for all our attendees today, this session is going to be recorded. I'm going to be putting this up on our YouTube channel, but don't feel like you can't ask questions via your microphones. Of course, you're able to ask via the chat box as well. Uh, it just will be on that YouTube recording uh, for when we end up posting that uh, later on. So let's get into it. Now, I'm just going to quickly adjust my screen share so that way we focus on this kind of little PDF presentation that I'm going to go through first. Now, in the other coaching sessions, typically in the second one, right, we talk about the five steps to a prospect interview. And what we're going to do is kind of round these out. But a quick little recap for those that may not have joined on to the previous coaching sessions. There are five things you're going to do at every single interview. And the first thing is you're going to greet them. You're going to say hi, you're going to set up, you're going to explain what's going on and, and really highlight that process. The next thing is that you'll actually do your interview. So we talk about this in depth in that second fundamentals coaching session. This talks about actually conducting the interview, what strategies you want to be implementing to get the best results. But there are three things following this that you're wanting to pay attention to. The first is prospecting. After your interview, the camera will have been turned off. You are no longer rolling. You're no longer on the record. So this is a perfect time to just have a regular conversation with them. And included within that conversation is bringing up what you do. Okay, you need to do this. And you don't want to do this first, right? If you did this first, that'd be their first impression. If you did this at the end, that'd be their last impression, right? You want to do this right here. It's the best time to discuss real estate. We're going to go through some strategies for how you can do that today. So talking about real estate, talking about them, open Q&A after that interview, that occurs in the middle here. And then once that conversation's wrapped up and it can be quite short or quite long, uh, what you're going to do next is talk about next steps. So talking about things like the business profile page, the newsletter, you know, social media, your expectations of them and what they can expect from you. You might talk about when that interview is going to be posted, uh, but even things like you know, what you want them to do in regards to the interview process in the future, maybe sharing this out with their friends, things like that. Because that links into our final step here, asking for referrals. So with each of these different things, you've got the greeting, you've got the interview, you've got the prospecting, the wrap up and asking for referrals. This makes up that interview experience. What will be on camera, and I like to reiterate this, is just the interview itself if you are doing a video interview. Everything else is off the camera, okay? So we're going to focus on these three here today, prospecting, wrap up, and asking for referrals. So let's get into prospecting. At this point in time during your process with this individual, your interview has finished. Now, you would have likely, you know, if you arrived there at 10 a.m., you would likely be at around 10, 15 at this point in time. You know, five minutes to set up, maybe 10 minutes to do the interview, maybe a little bit later, maybe it's 10, 20 by now. Maybe you've been there for 20 minutes. Having 10 minutes, 15 minutes left to do these next three steps is perfectly fine. That's kind of what you want to do for your time that's available. Now, one really important thing before we get into these strategies and how to bring this up is that if someone has questions about real estate, right, or about what you offer, what you want to do then is make a note of that and actually book in a time later to talk about that in more detail. Don't just get into full real estate mode right away. And the reason why I say that is if you were to just transition into talking about real estate for 45 minutes, when they think about you coming there to do that interview and then you overwhelming the, the conversation and the time with all this real estate content, that's not going to balance out. Your goal is to do this interview here. But if they're interested in real estate, set up a conversation in the future about that. 
Okay, so that's a really important thing about step three here, prospecting. If they're interested in this topic, set more time later to actually get into a conversation with them about it. And you say to them, hey, that sounds great. Let's book in a time for maybe next Tuesday to have a conversation about this. Uh, but I really want to make sure we've got all these steps covered for our interview before uh, I go today. So let's just get those down and then we'll, we'll come back to that later. And they're going to be reminded that you're here to do that interview, that that's your focus, and that that's what you want to do for them in terms of the value you're providing. So that's a really key thing to keep in mind. But in terms of the strategies and ways to bring this up, it really is going to vary depending on the sponsor themselves. I've worked with sponsors that are very, very confident, that love the idea of talking about what they do, and they do it with anyone they get the chance to. I've also worked with people who are not so keen on talking about what they do. Maybe there's a few limiting beliefs there. Maybe there's a fear of rejection. You know, they think that if they were to bring up real estate, it's going to make it all about them and it's going to tarnish the relationship and everything is going to go downhill. I've worked with people in that boat. And there was actually a client that I worked with quite closely who really had this limiting belief in regards to bringing up what she does in any relationship. Right. She just couldn't talk about real estate. And I had lots of coaching sessions with her. Uh, she had lots of coaching sessions with her broker about it as well. And eventually something kind of clicked, which was great. And she was speaking to her broker and she said to the broker, look, I really struggle with bringing up real estate. You know, any advice? Right. I'm worried that it's going to like tarnish the relationship. And the broker was like, OK, so like, what would you like to have happen? You know, how would you like to find your clients? And she said, well, you know, really nervous about bringing it up. So it'd be great if they brought it up or if they saw something and realized that I was a real estate agent, then brought it up after that, you know, because in that way, like I'm not forcing that into the conversation. This is kind of her, her track that she was using in her mind. And the broker was like, oh, I understand. So you're not really wanting to be a real estate agent. You're also wanting to be a secret agent. You don't want to let them know what you do. You want them to only capture or find you out. And he said, the reality is, that's not what business is like. In order to succeed in any sales related profession, you need to be able to talk about what you do because that is a fundamental part of selling something. So in an ideal world, people would go, oh my gosh, you're a real estate agent. I want to work with you. But we all know realistically, you got to do a bit of hunting to actually find clients. And so bringing up real estate is something that I know a lot of people can struggle with. Uh, but once you can move past those limiting beliefs, you know, those fears of rejection of, you know, if they're going to, you know, suddenly think you're a terrible person because you talked once about your job, once you get past that, then you can get into a really great area because this is what leads to some amazing conversations, which then leads to buyers and sellers that you can work with. So how do you bring up real estate at prospect interviews? Well, the first way is actually based off the questions that they ask you. When you're booking an interview or even afterwards, someone is likely going to ask you, what's in it for you? Why are you doing this? What's the catch? That is an amazing question to answer because you can talk about your motivations, your values, your principles, and really why you're doing what you're doing. And you shouldn't answer as it highlights the community only. You should really talk about yourself as a business owner. Because remember, you're speaking to a local professional, you're speaking to a business owner themselves, or even just a member of this community. They understand that you have to work, right? It'd be amazing if people didn't have to, but the reality is that we got to pay the bills, right? So talking about why you're doing this when they ask you why is a fantastic, easy opportunity to do that. Now, we have a big extensive uh, script here for you can pick out different points that you're wanting to answer. But as I talk about it on those other coaching sessions, you want to make sure that whenever you are answering this question, you're being authentic and you're really highlighting your true motivations. So a word of warning. I had a client once who just, again, very nervous about talking about real estate. She kept avoiding the, that whenever she could. And so the, she came onto one of my coaching sessions uh, a little while ago. She said, Matt, whenever someone asks me, why am I doing this? They always say no to doing the interview. And I was like, okay, tell me what you're saying. Kind of role played the situation out a little bit. And she told me her, her answer, which she thought was amazing. And it was great because it highlighted a lot of her motivations, but it wasn't comprehensive. So this was her answer. And I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. But her answer was this. Hey, great question. 
So the reason why I'm doing this and, and why I sponsored the site is because like you, I'm a resident of this area. I've lived here for the last 15 years and I absolutely love this community. So I saw this as a great way to really give back and help provide value to the business owners that are in this area to support them during this troubling time. Now on paper, that sounds great, but is that the real reason why she sponsored the site? I don't think so. Because if you can honestly say to yourself, at the end of your, your term, however long your term is here with Parkridge, at the end of your term, if you can say to yourself, hey, I provided value to business owners, I'm happy, then that's your motivation. But in my experience, the clientele that I work with have that as a motivation, but really their main motivator is to grow their business, to find clients, to see if they can become more of a connector in the community, for sure, establish their brand, absolutely. But it's to find clients, to get a positive ROI. And so that needs to be incorporated into your answer if that is your true motivations. Because otherwise, as a business owner, I'm going to listen to an answer which sounds great, but I'm going to think, what's the real catch? This person might not be really revealing their full hand to me. Should I trust this person? And now you've gone from me deciding on whether or not to do the interview to whether or not I believe this person is telling the truth. And that's a completely different scenario than what you want to be in. So when you answer why you're doing this, include your profession. So my version of that, that I coach to clients that I talk about on that previous coaching session, that fundamentals booking interviews coaching session and the conducting interviews coaching sessions is this. Matt, why are you doing this? Hey, great question. So the reason why I'm doing this and why I sponsor the site is because like you, I'm a resident of this area. I've lived here for the last 15 to 20 years and I absolutely love it. Uh, now in that time frame, I've been a real estate professional for maybe the last three or four years. And I found that my business in real estate has actually been built on the relationships and the referrals that I've given uh, and received from local businesses and the people in this community. So when I saw this site, I thought this was an amazing way to give back to our community, to give back to the homeowners, the local professionals, to the business owners in it, help support people, especially during this really challenging time. Um, because my goal is to meet people and build my business that way. Right, I'm confident that the more interviews that I'm doing, the more value that I'm providing to business owners like yourself, the higher the chance they're going to think of, hey, you know, you're a great person. You do business in the way that I want to do business, built off value. I'd love to work with you. Now, does that mean it's going to be you that says yes to working with me? I don't know. I'm just confident that the more I do this, the better it's going to be for my business. So that's my example script. But we've got a very in-depth one here that you can pull apart different pieces from but just make sure you're articulating your profession because that is going to make it so much easier to talk about your profession later on if they're asking you why you're doing this when you're booking or following uh, you doing that interview. Other questions that can come up are things like future facing questions. Now this isn't rocket science by any means, but what it is is asking a person a question about what's going to happen in the next year or two years, five years in the future. And what I tell a lot of our clients, uh, especially the ones that are nervous about bringing up real estate, uh, what I tell them to ask is simply that question. Where do you see yourself in the next 12 months, two years, three years? It's a great question to ask. Because when people are asking or are answering that type of question, they're going to think about where they want to be in that time frame. They create that mental image, of what they want to be doing. And more often than not, uh, these landmarks, these milestones are actually tied into different stages of a typical person's life and relationships that are coming along with those, right? So you could ask someone, hey, where do you see yourself in the next 12 months? They might say, oh, I'm actually getting married or I'm going to have a kid uh, or I'm wanting to grow my family or I'm going to retire or it could be all well, my kids have grown up and they've gone to college. Now I'm just going to be just me and the spouse or me by myself at home. All of those things tie into whether or not someone should buy a new home, right? Sell a home, invest, lots of different scenarios there. But in order to actually get that answer, you don't just ask the question, where do you see yourself in the next 12 months after that interview? You actually want to pre-frame it a little better. Because sometimes when you do an interview with someone, and then once the interview is done, 
you know, you're, you're having a conversation with them. You say, hey, did you enjoy that? They say, yes, it was so much fun. Like, awesome. Got a few other questions here. These aren't going to go on the interview. Tell me, where do you see yourself in the next 12 months? They may answer that question as it relates to their business still, because that's what they're used to talking about. So what I strongly encourage every sponsor to do is that in every single interview, ask the person, where do you see your business in the next 12 months? So that way afterwards, you can say, hey, I know you want to be here. What about you personally? Where do you want to be uh, in the next 12 months? Any milestones or landmarks that you're wanting to achieve? What you're doing then is you're essentially getting the information that's relevant to the interview within the interview. Where do you see your business in the next 12 months or five years or however long? And then as it relates to them as an individual, you're pre-framing that you've got the business component down. What about you as a person? And it's that little tweak which gives you a great question to ask in the interview, an interesting question to ask in the interview, but it makes it so much easier to get a more relevant answer to what you're looking for beyond that interview. Okay, so big difference there. In the interview, where do you see your business? After the interview, where do you see yourself? So this kind of unpacks that strategy in there for sure. But we've got some other ones in this resource as well. I work with some amazing top producing clients. One of them comes to mind, Arnold Hickey. He's a, a really switched on dude. Um, been in sales for the last 20 years, I think it is. Owned multiple businesses. And he had a strategy that at every interview, he would ask the same three questions. And his th three questions were, how long have you lived in the area? Where do you plan on moving next? And when? Now, the way he would ask them would change because it wouldn't just be those dry questions right off the bat. He would say things like, hey, so, you know, I've had a really great time uh, learning a lot about your business, but let me ask, you know, how long have you lived uh, in the neighborhood? Bang, easy way to start a conversation about that. Someone gives you the answer. They may even ask you the same question, but then you say to them, well, that's really interesting. You know, I've, I've loved this community. I've lived here for a long time. I've always wanted to live here. You know, is there any areas in our community that you'd like to live in? And then his third question, which is, when do you plan on moving, was based on their answer. Like, yes, I would love to live there. You know, being able to be in the, the downtown core would be amazing or be in more of a rural area or next to the parks and greening would be fantastic. You know, I'd love to do that as part of my like 10 year plan. What about yourself? Any plans to move anytime soon? And you have it be a very conversational question because I think people build up these questions too much. You know, oh, asking about real estate, it's a very serious thing. It's part of the conversation. You're speaking business owner to business owner, local professional to local professional, homeowner to homeowner, or at least community member to community member. These are the things that people talk about. Now, there are lots of other ones in here, but speaking of the things that people would talk about traditionally, after your interview, another great question that you could ask in the five to 10 minutes you have to speak with them after that interview is ask them about how they feel about what's going on right now. Now, I don't mean to get all political, but asking them a question like, hey, I know there's a lot going on, you know, uh, has it got you thinking about your living situation? Are there things that you have that you, you don't want anymore? Are there things that you don't have that you really wish you had? Because, you know, we've had lots of lockdowns and things like that. What are your thoughts? And see what they have to say. Now, the reason why I like that question is because it addresses what is going on in the world right now right? Coronavirus, COVID. But at the same time, it also enables us to look past that and focus on something that is more of a positive, more of something that's within their control. Now, I was asked these questions from uh, my direct report, our CEO of Park Ridge. And he said to me, man, he's like, hey, you know, I know you're living in downtown Toronto, uh, has everything that's going on, lockdowns, all sorts of different things, got you thinking about your living situation. Other things that you have that you don't want anymore or things that you don't have that you really wish you had. And at the time I was like, ah, oh, you know, doing okay. You know, uh, preface this grant had actually just moved to a very lovely area called Kelowna, which is like outdoors, mountains, lakes and stuff like that. And I'm in a busy, busy downtown Toronto. I feel like he might've had a motivation to actually have us move out there, but we stayed here in Toronto anyway. But anyway, when you think about that type of question, I was like, okay, are there things that I don't have that I wish I had? Or are there things that I have now that aren't relevant? Now I was living in this uh, amazing, but quite expensive uh, 
condo building with uh, gyms and there was a pool table and all these cool things, but none of it was available because the pandemic caused that to not be a thing and we couldn't use any of it. And so when we thought about it, we we're like, we're paying all this money for these resources, these amenities that we might not get to use in a long time. And so my wife and I had a discussion and we ended up moving within a few months. Now we're in a beautiful area closer to the outdoors and things like that. And I did the same thing with uh, members of my team. I've asked them that same question. So two people that I asked have actually both moved since me asking that question. So it's an interesting one to bring up. Now they may not have an answer for you right then and there, but that's when your follow-up comes in and you keep yourself front of mind. You've made this amazing initial relationship with that person. So then nurture it and ask them, you know, hey, had any thoughts about what we were talking about, you know, because this is when you can really introduce what you do if you've not already. And you say, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a real estate agent. You know, I, I help uh, first home buyers. I help niche um, or niche, whichever you prefer to say it. I help them buy and sell houses, depending on what their needs are, help them invest in real estate. So if you ever have any questions about the market, feel free to let me know. And you really heavily introduce what you do when there's an opportunity to do so. It's not about pushing it in their face. It's about looking at it as a way that you can better serve them. You've served them with this interview. Now, how else can you serve them? So these strategies, it's kind of like there's one for everyone on top of all the things that you would do with your regular prospects already. But my final point here before we stop for a few questions is mutual connections. This is a really easy way to get them talking about how you know someone, especially if it's a past client. So the way to go about this is before every interview you're doing, as you're researching someone, you go on Facebook, right? Go on LinkedIn, see if you've got any mutual connections there. Because if you have a past client that's a mutual connection, you want to bring them up. It's so easy to talk about real estate. So you can say to the person, Hey, when I was doing a little bit of research about you and your business ahead of the interview, I actually noticed that you were friends with or that you know, name. How do you know them? And the natural response to that question is to answer and then ask, how do you also know them? And then that way you can talk about how you serve this person, buying, selling, or investing in your area. But that type of question is a common one. People like to do business with those that they are familiar with, that those that they trust, that those that they have their connection with. It's the basis of getting referrals. And so you want to be using this in your conversations because it's a really easy way to build trust. And it makes you feel more connected to them as well. So these strategies, I'm going to send them all through to you in a follow-up email. But to each their own. Every person is going to have their own unique style for this. You might tweak the suggestions that I've got here. You might add in parts of them to existing strategies that you use. You may even just use your own strategies already because you feel comfortable with those. So long as you're inputting that you can help this person buy or sell, that's the main thing. Because when you're a ghost, when you're a secret agent and no one knows what you do outside of these interviews, you'll be known as the person who does interviews, which is great but not the person who buys and sells or helps their clients buy and sell successfully who provides value through these interviews. So that's a really important thing because I've seen people just be, I don't know what it is, but tied to this limiting belief that they can't talk about real estate and it's not a good thing for their business. So it's a really, really important thing to bring up. But what we're going to do here is pause for a little bit of, um, for the attendees that are on live and we'll just see if there's any questions about what we've covered so far. So you can either unmute yourself and use your microphones uh, or you can put a little message in the chat box uh, asking your question that way if you prefer. All that I ask if that, is that if you don't have any questions, just let me know in the chat box that you're good to go and that way we can move on because I don't want to push forward if you're not ready to at this point in time. So any questions so far? I'll just put that into the chat box now. Matthew? Yeah. Um, are you going to be talking about um, additional follow-up post-interview, like putting these guys in your database and if that's cool or not? Is that part of what we're going to talk about today? Uh, yeah. Well, we can even talk about that right now. So that is something that I encourage all of our sponsors to do. Once you've connected with someone, you've done this interview, 
you want to be putting this person into your CRM and you can pre-frame it at this meeting. So if we go back to our five steps, you know, that fits in perfectly within the prospecting and wrap up piece. It's letting them know what's going to happen in the future. Now you may want to ask and say, Hey, what's going to happen is that after the interview, I'm going to post it in the next couple of weeks, you'll, you'll be subscribed to the Park Bench Sites newsletter, which will send out, you know, every week a, a newsletter about what's going on on the site, the different interviews like yourself that's been done. You'll also be featured in there the week after I post yours. But on top of that, I do have some other materials that if you are interested in buying, selling or investing in Liberty Village, uh, I'd love to be able to send you some information. Would that be something you'd like to receive maybe just once a week and just see what they have to say? Now, for some people, they're going to say no, because they're not going to want that. And that is totally fine. Uh, for other people, though, they're going to love it. So either way, you want to put them into your CRM. It's more so about whether they want to be subscribed, I guess, to any additional marketing emails and follow-up emails that you would send if you have a drip campaign or a marketing campaign that way. So does that answer your question there, Liz? Yes. I also thought about um, trying to get their um, personal address so that I could send them a thank you card. Yep. And then, you know, let them know if, if it's okay with them. I'd like to continue to send them information every once in a while. So just like you said, so yeah. good. It's just pre-framing, right? That's, that's the key thing. I do that with my team uh, and, you know, just with anything, pre-frame what you want as an ask now, rather than asking for it later on, because it's a lot harder to get a yes later, especially when you're not either in person or speaking to them through like a Zoom uh, on a meeting like this, which is basically virtual face-to-face. -face. So yeah, pre-framing what you're wanting from them. Really, really good. Cool. But a quick little summary of this prospecting piece. What it is, is following the interview, having a conversation and chatting with this person about how their experience was when they were being interviewed and finding out if they're interested in buying or selling or have any interest in it whatsoever. Because if they don't, that's cool. The majority of people in your area won't be looking to buy or sell. That's just the reality of people buying or selling in a given area. There is an absorption rate. It's a percentage of people based on the total population that are looking to buy or sell a home. Usually it's anywhere from one or 2% to maybe 8%. It's never 50%. It's never 50% of the people in your area are planning on moving unless you live in a very small space and everyone's leaving or something like that. Cool. But with that conversation, it may be quite short. It may be a little bit longer. Regardless of how it goes, you talk about wrap up. And wrap up is confirming all their contact and business information. It's a great time to confirm those, those details that Liz was mentioning, where it's like, hey, do you want to be subscribed to this? Can I get the, uh, your physical address is in your thank you card? Things like that, lovely ideas. But you also want to talk about what's going to happen as it relates to the interview process. So you're going to post, you're going to post this interview at some point. Let them know when that's going to happen. Because if you don't, what can happen is that, say you plan on posting this in four weeks' time. After two and a half weeks, they may start to think, uh, is this interview still happening? Do we even do that? Is that going to be posted? And uh, It's not the best for that relationship. So pre-frame when you're going to do it. My recommendation is two weeks, within two weeks from the date that you've done the interview. But if you've got a busy schedule, it's totally acceptable to go longer. Just make sure you communicate that. And if it's quite a long time, you know, five weeks, even four weeks, giving them a quick little follow-up in between. Just be like, hey, haven't forgotten about you. I'm going to post this on this day. Super excited for it. The interview is looking great. Send. That just loops them in on that process a lot more. Now, the other things you want to talk about are things like social media. Do you have uh, goals or a target for what you want them to be doing as it relates to sharing on social media? Now, bear in mind that this is optional. It's up to them to decide if they would like to do this. But the way that it kind of works is you need to ask, you need to pre-frame. So after your interview, confirm all their contact information, their business information is correct. Talk about when you're going to post that interview, but then also if you have any goals in regards to social media for that person. Now, I find that found the best way to speak about social media is to talk about what you're going to do and then ask them if they're going to do the same. Rather than just bluntly asking them, you're going to talk about what you are wanting to do. Cool. So what you do next is that for, for social media, is you say to the person, look, 
Uh, I plan on posting this interview in the next two weeks. I think it's going to be really awesome. Uh, but when I do, it's going to go to the site and you'll receive an email from Parkbench or a couple of emails with your login information, you know, uh, and how you can see that, um, you know, interview that we've done. But I'm also going to be sharing this on my social media because I want to get as many people seeing this as possible from my sphere of influence. Um, so we're going to post it on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the main ones there. Now, if you're interested, I would love for you to do the same. Would that be something you'd be interested in doing? Or you're going to share it too, right? Depending on your personality about how you want to articulate that question. But you actually ask, are you going to do this? Because if you don't, what happens is that you imply and ask, oh, it'd be great if you did the same. And they'll nod and you'll go, yay. And then six weeks later, you've posted the interview and they're still not shared it. And that's because they were never really engaged in doing that. So when you're going through that process, be sure to actually ask. Because the worst case scenario, they say no, and that's okay. If they're not sharing that interview, that is not the end of the world at all. Because always remember your goal for what you're doing with this person through this interview. Building a relationship. And that person is the first audience that you're wanting to impress. Now, the second audience is your fans and followers as well as their fans and followers. You know, the people that are connected to you in some way. The third audience, the tertiary audience, is going to be the rest of social media. You want to make sure that the person you're interviewing, interviewed sorry, is happy with it. They just might not have social media to share on, and that's fine. You want to make sure that they're happy with it, though. Because if they aren't happy with the content you've created, because you've made it some super social media friendly, 111 you know, second video and stuff that doesn't highlight them, it's just lots of different shots. What's going to happen is that you might get a lot of, lot, sorry, a lot of likes, comments, and shares, which is great. But if that person says, I don't like it, take it down. What do you do then, right? You're, all those likes, comments, and shares kind of di disappear, right? Because the immediate audience is the person that you have interviewed. So always keep that in mind. But the final thing in regards to wrap up that you can talk about, but is not required of you to talk about is the business profile page. Now, every person that you interview will have the ability to have a business profile page essentially created for them right away if you use a specific business interview template. So if I go into my control panel of my site, the interview template that I'm referring to is called the business owner interview template. Now, if we scroll down and click on interviews here on the left-hand side, you're going to see here that there are lots of different forms and templates for you to use. You want to go with the business owner interview template every single time. And the reason why is that this is the one that will create that profile for the person that you've interviewed. So you wanna make sure this is done every single time. Now on this, you can see here that we've got the different steps. We talk about some of the sessions, but step one is like the business information. Step two is the questions. Step three, uh, things like the, you know, adding in YouTube and summary and video and things like that. But step one and the information that's marked here with little red asterisk symbols is required because this is either used for the interview, the business profile page, or their account. So the email address you put in there is going to be used for their account, right? The name position, you know, that's going to be used for the interview, but the business name, the business address, the category, neighborhood, you know, these things are going to relate to this business profile page. So all the information that goes in here is either used for the interview, the user account, or the business profile page. Now, as soon as you click post, what's going to happen is they are going to be sent these two emails. And I'll show you these after the session. I'll send you a link to them. But one is for their login information. And one is for kind of what they can do with the platform. It's got links to all these different resources and the option to read their interview and a reminder to share it on social media. From that point onwards, they have access to all of our support. Phone, email, live chat. They can use it all. Now, once they get those emails, they're going to get that business profile page set up for them as well. 
So if we go onto my site, you'll see that if I move my mouse over here, I've got a little field called business dashboard. This is what a business owner would see when they log in. And they'll be able to edit their business profile page. Now I've got one set up here for uh, Parkbench. We can see we've got a business name, handle, description, featured images, categories, you know, all sorts of different fields. COVID updates, you know, this is particularly relevant for like restaurants, social profiles, things like that. Now, this is kind of the back end of a business profile page. It's only accessible by the business owner and of course our support team. So the more information that you put into the interview template, the less the business owner would ever need to do later on. But some business owners will not care regardless. They'll, they'll engage with it. They'll make the most of the platform absolutely every time. Other business owners might not really care about it. They just want the interview and that's cool too. But one of the best features for a business owner is the ability to manage deals. So business owners have the option to upload deals, coupons, sales, and specials to the site. And they can do that through the section here. We've got things like gift cards, which is done through the gift up app an app that lots of business owners use for gift cards, external coupons. So maybe they have a, a gift uh, card or a discount or a coupon on another website. They put that website in here under URL, put the details of the deal and then click create. That'll go on their profile page. Same goes with in-store sales, usually for people that sell products, start an end date of that sale. They can pick an image, title, fine print, and then click create deal. Daily specials is another one. This is usually for restaurants. They'll upload a Monday to Sunday daily special, right? A discount or an offering on a particular day of the week. They might have multiple ones, but it could be sweet tooth Tuesdays where it's a discount on desserts. I put the details in here and click create deal. But you've got two other options here, new customer coupon and review coupon. These ones are a little more park bench E in terms of the deals themselves. A new customer coupon is one which incentivizes customers, right? Typically new customers to try out a business. So a business owner could click new customer coupon, fill out the deals here or the details of the deal here, sorry and click create deal. That'll be posted on your site and anyone that wants that deal can get it. They click on it, they can redeem it and go to the business and use it, but it's limited to one per person. So that way it's really designed for people to try them out or come back and use that business. Whereas a review coupon can be used multiple times. However, the way that the review coupon works is that it requires someone to leave a review before they can actually get the deal. So the new customer coupon, I could just get it right off the bat and use it, but I've got to go at once. Review coupon, I can get multiple times over a period of time, but I have to leave a review each time. And that's my favorite type of deal that we offer on the site. Because what it does is it gets more five-star reviews for businesses. Now, typically the more positive reviews a business gets, the more business that they do. Uh, but there was a study done, I think this was in 2017, 2018. And they said that 89% of people, so almost nine out of 10 people use reviews when making a decision on a business to use, a product to use, a service to acquire. However, they looked at how many people actually leave reviews and it was one out of 100 on average. So you've got 89 out of 100 that use these reviews, one out of 100 that actually leave them. That's a huge disparity. And so businesses really need positive reviews. So what you can do here is have reviews that are unique to your Parkbench site left on your Parkbench site that are incentivized through an offering. And it could be something small. It could be 10% off for leaving a review. It could be 20% off for leaving a review. It could be whatever the discount is for leaving a review or giving something for free, you know, buy two mains, get a free appetizer, that type of thing. So it's really my particular favorite. Okay. Now, all of this is explained in the emails that we get, we send out through them. So it talks about posting deals and events and things like that. Um, now they have access fully to our support team as well. So if ever they're like, I don't know what any of these are, they all have access to this little live chat guy or email or phone, and they can actually chat with us. They can view our help center too. Now they can always give us a call 
if that's easier for them as well, or you can ask us to call the business owners too for us to help for sure. But I find that the best way to do this is actually directly following the interview. And you explain the business profile page briefly, but also outline what you can do for them. And so to put an example, in your wrap up phase, you would speak to the business owner about their social media and the next steps and things like that. And you say, hey, before I forget, uh, this business profile page that I mentioned to you before is actually really cool. It's totally free. And one of the free things you can do on it is actually upload deals, coupons, sales, and specials. So I was wondering if you were interested in posting something on there, because unlike you know other services like Groupon, we have to pay a percentage or a fee. It's 100% free for you. And then you go into one of these questions. So would you like to offer a deal to new customers to maybe incentivize them to try come you, uh, to come try you out? Or would you like to offer a deal to reward your customers for maybe writing a positive review about your business? And so what you're doing here is you're putting that offer out there. And then if they're interested in it, all you do is you write it down and you send it to our support team to upload to the site. Because we don't want you taking a bunch of time trying to coach them or support them and uploading it themselves. Business owners like yourself are busy. So what you want to do is simply write down the details of that deal, send it to our team, and we will upload it to your site for you. So that way you know it's done right. And it doesn't mean that you have to spend time doing it. Now you do have the ability to upload two of these deals for yourself. And that is in the interviews tab under our template. You can actually upload deals. At the bottom of step one, you'll see there's an option for a review coupon, a new customer coupon. These will go live as soon as you post that interview. By all means, they're not required. The benefit of having businesses post deals on the site though, is that it helps them directly make money. And if they're making money from your platform that you're giving to them for free on top of the interview that you've done for them, then it's gonna be a wonderful thing for that relationship. Some sponsors love this and they hit it hard. They reach out and they have this be a part of their process. Other sponsors just focus on other elements of the site and how they can use that to build relationships and prospect. If you wanna go for the deals angle, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay too. The gold standard would be to really push that as a feature, but it's not required of you to do so. So I'm gonna send through this resource, which has got a lot of information here in regards to what you wanna cover. It's got a video of Jesse explaining it too, if you're not really particularly a fan of uh, reading through a bunch of info. So I'll put through all that in my follow-up email to you. Now it sounds like a lot, but realistically to summarize this point, you confirm their contact information. You let them know when you're gonna post that interview and what you're gonna do on social media but you also highlight that they've got this business profile page that they can upload deals onto. Okay, if they're interested, great, write it down. If they're not, not a problem. Then you move on. So I talk at length about these things, but you can really trim that down into a few minute conversation with them because it depends on what they're interested in. But the final piece here is ending on a high note and that is asking for referrals. So when you're finishing this conversation, the best way to do that is to say to the person, hey, did you have a good time today? And if they say, yes, it was so much fun. Thank you so much for interviewing me. I say, absolutely, I loved it, it was so great. Uh, before I go, you know, do you know of anyone else that would inter be interested in being interviewed? Or do you know of anyone else that would maybe benefit from being interviewed? And what you do here is you position this interview as a prize for them to gift out. And it can actually increase the number of interviews that you end up doing. At the same time, it can also um, you know, allow you to book interviews faster because people in your community can actually start connecting you with them. Because after the interview, you can say, do you know of anyone else that I absolutely have to interview next? They could say, yes, you have to interview this person. You can say, that's great. Can you connect me with them? I'd love to, to reach out to them and, and see if we can do an interview. Some business owners really love that and they take it and run with it. So that is the way you end that process. You don't ask all these questions, but you just ask one of them, right? Do you know of anyone else that would be interested in being interviewed and featured on the site? So quick little recap of what we've covered. Just kind of put this whole process together. The first thing you do at an interview, whether it's on Zoom or in person, is you greet them. 
pre-frame expectations about what you're going to do, what's happening after that interview, explain the process and set up your equipment. Next, you do your interview. This is consisting usually of an introduction, your questions and answers, and a conclusion. And then for the last 15 minutes, you spend about five to six minutes talking about life, prospecting, asking more questions about their business, having them ask questions of you. It's your Q&A beyond the interview. You're off the record for this conversation, but you really want to make sure you're bringing up real estate at some point. Next, you get towards the end phase of what you're doing. Another five, six minutes where you wrap up, confirm all their contact information, their business info is correct, and you really talk about social media, their business profile pages, and what's going to happen after this interview. And then you finish by asking for referrals, ending on a high. Do you know anyone that uh, would you think you would really enjoy being interviewed that I should connect with next? And that kind of bookends your process. Now, beyond this, what you really want to be thinking about is how to connect with this person again and again. And that's where it comes into follow-up campaigns, right? So follow-up campaigns are going to vary depending on the person. We've got lots of different ones that we suggest. You'll also have your own strategies there. Email, drop buys, uh, items of value that you're giving, physically items of value that you're giving digitally. So many of them. My preferred ways for people to follow up is number one, think about what this person needs and wants and likes that you found out at and after that interview and share with them content that relates to that or connect them with people that they should be connected with. So always asking, what are your goals or what are your greatest challenges? Because that gives you information, not only for the interview, but for yourself later on. If they say that they love rock climbing, go and interview a business that provides you rock climbing as a service and then connect uh, that interview that you've done with the rock climbing company with this initial person. And you just say, hey, you know, I know you mentioned that you're a huge fan of this. I saw this and I thought of you, send. Or I actually interviewed someone that does what you're looking for. So in case you're interested in checking them out, here's our interview here. Because what it's going to do is it's going to really round out your process there. But we've got lots of other uh, sessions on follow-up, advanced follow-up campaigns, which usually runs on Mondays, covers thank you campaign, you know, the free coffee campaign, things like that. We've also got GTD sessions on creating a survey for your database, which allows you to better follow up. But it's kind of one of those things that becomes very expansive because it's not really limited to anything you're following. It's really about what you and they would like to talk about. So any final questions about what we've uh, you know, covered today, let me know. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll send you through a follow-up email, which really recaps everything that we've gone through. And if you have any questions about that, you can always reach out to me by email. That's not a problem. Uh, what I will ask is that everyone just put your email address either publicly or privately into the chat box, just so that way I know who to send this follow-up email to. Sometimes the name on Zoom doesn't match the name that we have in the park bench a back end for your account so i just want to make sure we have the right info excellent so i've got that from liz fantastic james send that to me as well fantastic so uh ali any other uh, questions things like that feel free to shoot those through or put your email address in there if you ever don't get a follow-up email from me just reach out to our support team just using a little live chat guy i find this is the fastest way to do it and we'll be more than happy to uh shoot those through to you as well Cool. Excellent. So any other questions, team, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. Next steps for fundamentals, make sure to get those first four done. That's going to really round out your process uh, a little better for what you're doing. Cool. So I'll leave this open for a minute or two, but if you're good to go, have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.